Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 3rd of May. Indian Prime Minister Modi campaigns in poll-bound Karnataka province. High-velocity storms kill more than 70 in northern and western India. And Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Rabbani calls on public to register to vote. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Opposition Congress President Rahul Gandhi on Thursday held rallies in Karnataka as part of their election campaigns in the poll-bound southern province. Elections to the 224-seat assembly in Karnataka are crucial to their poll calculations for the general election to be held in 2019. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday began his second round of campaigning in poll-bound Karnataka province with a rally in Kalaburgi district. The Prime Minister will address a series of rallies in a build-up to the polling day for the return of his Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP to power in the southern province. Karnataka is important to the BJP because it will be its gateway to the south, which is vital to its poll calculations for the general election in 2019. ये चुनाव तो कर्नाटक के नवजवानों का भविष्य तय करने के लिए है कर्नाटक के किसानों का भाग्य बदलने के लिए है कर्नाटक की माताओं बहनों को सुरक्षा और सम्मान देने के लिए चुनाव है यहां के नवजवानों को उनके हक का अधिकार का जो मिलना चाहिए वो मिलने के लिए चुनाव है Meanwhile, opposition Congress has also stepped up the campaign in the province, one of the three provinces where it is still in power. Congress President Rahul Gandhi, who is spearheading the campaigning for his party, also held corner meetings in several parts of Karnataka on Thursday. Elections to the 224-seat assembly in Karnataka will be held on the 12th of May, where more than 40 million people are eligible to vote. Serbia's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister on Thursday met Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj in New Delhi to boost bilateral relations between the two nations. During talks, both the sides agreed to enhance cooperation in trade, investment and defence, among other sectors of mutual interest. Serbia's first Deputy Prime Minister and also the Foreign Minister Ivica Devic on Thursday met Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj in Delhi to boost bilateral ties between the two nations. Both the leaders held delegation-level talks during which they held discussions on expanding cooperation in trade and investment, agriculture, defence and education among other issues. India and Serbia have traditionally enjoyed deep friendship as co-founders of the Non-Aligned Movement and both the nations have 70 years of strong diplomatic relations. In 2016, bilateral trade between India and Serbia amounted to over 142 million US dollars with Indian exports at 133 million US dollars and imports at 9.4 million US dollars. At least 78 persons were killed and several injured after a powerful dust storm swept through northern and western India, government officials said on Thursday. The eastern part of Rajasthan province was the worst affected in the high-velocity dust storm. At least 78 people were reported to have been killed in dust storms sweeping across the northern and western Indian provinces, government officials said on Thursday. The deadly storm hit parts of northern Uttar Pradesh and western Rajasthan province of the country on Wednesday. One of the worst affected was Alwar region of Rajasthan, where widespread damage to private and public property was witnessed. Electricity connection has also been severed in many areas as power lines and electricity poles were damaged by the storm. देखिए बहुत हाई इंटेंसिटी का थंडर स्ट्रोम आया था और उसमें पूरे जिले में अभी तक पांच मृत्यु रिपोर्ट हुई है और करीब 22 लोग जो हैं सीरियस हालत में डिस्ट्रिक्ट हॉस्पिटल के ट्रॉमा सेंटर में उपचाराधीन हैं करीब सात से आठ हजार बिजली के खंभे गिर गए हैं करीब 40 से 50 बिजली के बड़े टावर जो हैं वो गिर गए ह 
33 people were reportedly killed on Wednesday across Rajasthan and 45 in the northern province of Uttar Pradesh, authorities said. Normal life was severely hit in Moradabad city of northern Uttar Pradesh province, where trees were uprooted after the powerful storm. While the injured are undergoing treatment in hospitals, authorities have also been directed to provide relief in all affected areas within the next 24 hours. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's ousted Premier Nawaz Sharif owned the London flats while holding public office. The investigation officer in Evanfield corruption reference against him told the court on Wednesday. An accountability has been hearing a total of three corruption references against Sharif and his family for owning assets beyond known sources of income. Pakistan's outstate Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif owned the Evanfield properties while he was a public office holder. The investigating officer in the corruption reference against him informed an accountability court on Wednesday. Imran Dogar stated that Sharif used offshore companies to buy the properties in London while he was the actual owner of the apartments. He said that during investigations, the accused were unable to provide their sources of income and that the properties have been in ownership of the Sharif family since 1993. An accountability court has been hearing a total of three corruption references against Sharif and his family for owning assets beyond known sources of income. Sharif and his two sons are accused in all three references, whereas his daughter, Mariam, and son-in-law are named in the Evanville reference only. Moving on. Residents in Muzaffarabad, district of Pakistan administered Kashmir, recently held a protest over embezzlement of funds allocated for medical colleges in the region. The locals alleged the illegally occupied region holds only a few underdeveloped medical colleges and hospitals to cater a huge number of patients. Anger is simmering among the public in Muzaffarabad district of Pakistan administered Kashmir after they got to know that funds allocated for the development of a medical college in their region have been transferred to other areas. The residents in the illegal occupied region recently came out on streets to protest against the injustice. They alleged the government does not allow the development of medical institutions in the region, leaving a burgeon number of patients at the mercy of untrained and inexperienced doctors. ये हुकूमत जो बिल्कुल सोई हुई है किसी मंसूबे से किसी आवाम की किसी जो जुरियात है उससे उसे कोई दिलचस्पी नहीं है आजकल तो सिर्फ आपकी हुकूमत को कायम रखने में सरकार में अमल है मैं इस वाक्य की شدید मजम्मत करता हूं कि इसका जो फंड है वो कोटली और नीर पर में منتقل किया जा रहा है ये 8 करोड़ रुपया ये किस हवाले से क्यों मुंतकिल किया जा रहा है कि अगर उन्होंने इसे वापस ना लिया तो अगला स्टेप इससे सख्त करेंगे इंशाल्लाह पूरे शहर में हम शटर डाउन की काल भी दे सकते हैं इससे बड़ा जी हड़ताल की काल भी दे सकते हैं People have been waiting for years for a better administration that could work for the region's development but in vain a part of the erstwhile princely province of India's Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan administered Kashmir was illegally annexed by Pakistan over six decades back. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Salahuddin Rabbani on Wednesday called on Afghans to register to vote for the upcoming parliamentary and district council polls in the country. Rabbani, who is also the chairman of Jamiat Islami Party, said his party will be having an active role in the parliament and district council in the coming time. Afghanistan's foreign minister and chairman of Jamiat Islami Party, Salahuddin Rabbani, on Wednesday called on the Afghan public to register to vote for the upcoming parliamentary and district council polls in the country. Rabbani further said his party will be having an active role in the parliament and district council in the coming time. خواهش ماست تمام مردم محترم افغانستان امیز که در این زوان ده سبت نام سهم بگیرن، فعالانه سهم بگیرن تا همه گی شاید یک انتخابات شفاف و عادلانه باشیم. Meanwhile, a number of lawmakers in Afghanistan's parliament stressed the need for an effective monitoring system to be implemented to ensure legitimacy and transparency in the elections. خدای نخواسته تو نشه که بحران سر بحران افزود شد و بالاخره ما یک انتخابات شفاف نداشته باشیم. 
Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission is struggling to resolve problems around the voter registration database, which has sparked strong criticism among observers and politicians. The poll body has claimed over the past 17 days, over 800,000 people have registered across the country to vote. Of these, 200,000 are women. More on news from Afghanistan. The Special Investigator General for Afghanistan Reconstruction has reported that Taliban's control of districts as of the end of January remains virtually unchanged. The report said the group controls or influences 59 districts in Afghanistan despite crackdown. The Special Investigator General of Afghanistan Reconstruction or SIGAR has reported that the terror group Taliban's control of districts as one of the end of January remains virtually unchanged. According to SIGAR's latest report, the Taliban continues to maintain its grip on half of Afghanistan despite US military's reinvigorated effort to force the group from its strongholds. The report said the Afghan government controls or influence of 229 of Afghanistan's 407 districts, the Taliban control or influences 59 districts. The remaining 119 districts are contested. Accordingly, early 2018 has already seen an increase in the number of U.S. airstrikes conducted in Afghanistan. In February, Afghanistan held an international conference on peace in a bid to pave the way forward to get the Taliban to denounce violence and enter into proposal peaceful negotiation with government. President Ghani himself called on the group to accept the offer and to join the peace process. A first ever cooking competition to promote chef culture was recently held in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The competition witnessed participation of more than 200 people including housewives. A cooking competition to promote chef culture was recently held in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The first of its kind competition titled Big Chef Kashmir witnessed participation of more than 200 people including young boys and girls and even housewives. All the ingredients required to make the dishes were provided by the organizers only. The participants were also given dress codes of a professional chef look. We have three rounds that the participants, the housewives, the children who have come from home, the children who have come from school. The first round was that they made some dish from their home, which we have evaluated. Then in the second round, some people have come from home. As a cook, as a chef, I should say rather, we have a chance to present our talent in front of people, in front of the audience. We have a very important platform because as being a Kashmiri, we don't get a lot of opportunities. And when you're getting something like this, your opinion comes in front of the world, the way you present your talent. The organizers, after two rounds of the competition, now plan to evaluate and select the participants for the final round. The winners will be then awarded with cash prizes and certificates. Tourists from across the world visit Kashmir Valley every year to enjoy its national beauty and even take keen interest in its traditional cuisines. Thus, such events are a way to train the local youth professionally, which could help them generate income for them. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi campaigns in pole-bound Karnataka province. High-velocity storms kill more than 70 in northern and western India. And Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Rabbani calls on public to register to vote. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.